An American citizen now living and working in Qatar has been barred by U.S. authorities from going home. Sadiq Long, who's an Air Force veteran, has been trying to visit his native Oklahoma to see his sick mother. Let's talk to Adam Sultani from the Oklahoma chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations. So why isn't Sadiq allowed to go home? Well, we haven't been told as to why he won't go home, uh, is not allowed to return home. All we know is that every time he's tried to uh, board the plane or get his boarding pass from the airport in Doha, they have denied him. They have pointed him to the U.S. Embassy. He has filed complaints with the embassy and with the Department of Homeland Security. It's been more than six months, and as of now, he has not heard back from them. We can only assume that he's on a no-fly list, and they won't tell us why. What are you doing to help him? Well, uh, we have written a letter to uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton pleading for her to, to allow Sadiq to return home, especially in this, in this dire need. It's uh, pretty much a humanitarian need that, uh, you know, that he needs to return home to, to be with his dying mother. Um, that's very important. But at the same time, we're also working um, to uh, contact the appropriate agencies and see what we can do to intervene and speed things along. We have been in touch with the U.S. Embassy and with other agencies, and we are working along with Sadiq and those agencies to see the, if we can get him back before the holidays commence. You mentioned a no-fly list. What, what mm -hmm. is that? Well, the, you know, and the FBI has a no-fly list. Um, they won't tell us who's on it, why they're on it, or they won't give us any details about it. All we know is that if you're on this no-fly list, they don't allow you to board a plane to return back to the United States. As far as we know, he could board a plane to, re to go anywhere else in the world, but, you know, he needs to get back here to, to Oklahoma and the United States. When did you last speak to him, and, and how is he feeling? Well, we actually, I spoke to him about uh, two hours ago, um, and he is feeling frustrated and, and worried, and, and really the circumstances are pretty much heartbreaking because he is concerned that he may never get to see his mother again, and that's a reality we have to deal with. Um, and, and, you know, which parents wouldn't want their last wish to be with their children? So um, we're working with him. We're trying to keep him calm and, and stay focused that, you know, we will get him back home before the holidays. We don't have any guarantee of that, but we're very hopeful that, that eventually we will get him back home. Um, this no-fly list um, presumably is to prevent any chance of terrorists entering American soil. Um, mm -hmm. Why do you think that he, he would be picked out and seemingly suspected as having s terrorist links? Well, there's no indication of any reason for him to be on this no-fly list. Um, he has never been convicted of any criminal activity. Uh, he has served his country for 10 years in the U.S. Air Force, and he has indicated that there is nothing he can think of that would, would link him to anything criminal in nature. Um, you know, there are cases CARE has dealt with in the past of individuals who were placed on a no-fly list. Sometimes it just has to do with the name. Their name may sound like someone who is affiliated with criminal activities or or something of the sort. We have never really been given answers by the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security, so we're not 100 percent sure. It's kind of speculation at this point. But nevertheless, um, you know, he's indicated that he is a, a law-abiding U.S. citizen and really cannot think of anything that would prevent him from travel. Would you accept, though, that this no-fly list this, um, is a valid and precautionary measure, or would you say that by banning people from the freedom of going in and out of America, it could be against human rights, could be illegal? Well, you know, it's definitely they are they are taking away the, the, the rights of a U.S. citizen by not allowing them to fly. I mean, there are, you know, obvious security reasons to have a no-fly list, but if, they're on, if a person's on a no-fly list, then you know, perhaps there are other reasons they should be apprehended or if they're criminals or whatnot. Why are they just not allowed from flying? Um, so, yeah, the no-fly list is a good security measure if there's a reason. But uh, Sadiq in particular and other people who have been on the no-fly list before and have, have been able to return have never given, been given indication as to why they were on it. Um, Sadiq has, has offered and is willing to speak to the government and to whoever officials he needs to if they have any questions or, or concerns. But he, like I said, he doesn't know any reason as to why he would be on such a list. Be interested to see the outcome of the story. Thank you very much indeed. Adam Sultani from the Oklahoma chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations.